Hi, I'm Michael Butler from Kinetics Health and Performance Center here in Palm Desert, California. I'm a licensed physical therapy assistant through the state of California, a certified strength and conditioning specialist through the NSCA, a performance enhancement specialist through the ACSM, a check level two practitioner, and a certified neuromuscular therapist. Over the past 20 years of conditioning and rehabbing athletes, it's the female volleyball player that possesses the biggest challenge for me due to structural issues, hormonal deficiencies, nutritional deficiencies, and the timing of playing and practices. Throughout the year, since the volleyball player has all these time constrictions, it makes it quite difficult to put through the whole conditioning program. So what you do has to be pretty, pretty selective. Today I put together this wellness video not only to instruct but to inform the coach, the parent, and the athlete how to take care of their body both uh, nutritionally, conditionally, and structurally so that that athlete can reach their ultimate potential which is reaching the next level of their sport. We're going to start today's program with a movement prep program. Movement prep prepares the athlete just like it says for preparation to move. So the first thing we're going to go over is foam roller, a foam roller progressive program. Over here we have Cody working over the quad muscles to relieve some active trigger points that um, become hyper irritable especially in a volleyball player because they use their quads so much. So she's just rolling over the uh, foam roller nice and slow and when she finds a hyper irritable point, hyper -irritable point she's just going to hold it and roll over it slowly to release the uh, tissue so there will be more blood flow. Over here we have Paulina. Paulina's rolling over the side of her leg because as we know the abductors are used highly in volleyball and can have hyper irritable points as well. So again she's going to start at the hip level and work her way down to the knee and when she finds a sensitive point she's going to hold it and roll over it as well. She's going to repeat this about 10 times. Over here we have Mahala who is rolling back and forth now over her back over her erector spinae muscles. So any tight muscles that might interfere with her jumping this is a good mobilization to do on her back. This is Paulina performing the glute mobilization now so when she finds a hyper irritable point over her glute she's going to hold that press down into the foam roller hold it for about 10 seconds and now we're going to move down into the hamstring where she'll do the same thing if she happens to find a hyper irritable point she's going to find it hold it for about 10 seconds allow it to release good and roll over it again should feel a little bit better. Now we're going to work down to the calf muscle, the gastroc and the soleus. She's going to roll back and forth over the calf muscles. In a volleyball player, there are many hyper irritable points here, right in the muscle belly. So she's going to find a spot there, roll over it, hold it, press down, and release. Part two of our movement prep preparation here to warm up is the girls now are going to proceed to light jogging around the court just to increase some blood flow, loosen up the muscle tissues to be ready to actually start moving into the next uh, phase of our program. They're going to try to use good arm sequencing with their legs, get the arms firing, good posture. We usually have them go around three times and then they slowly build up speed they are going to go a little faster and then on the last lap they're probably going to be going at about 85 percent speed. Good job girls. The first movement prep stretch we're going to do or side to side lunges this prepares the adductors for movement when we get more into a dynamic uh, phase of the program. So the girls are just going to go side to side, go slow, stay low, almost like in a dig position in volleyball. They're going to do about 10 times on each side. And the next exercise stretch that we're going to do is called a hand walk. This is loosening up the hamstring muscles as they come all the way to the top. They're going to go slow with control and they're going to repeat it three times. So we're walking out, keeping our backs nice and straight and walking right back up to the top. Get a good stretch of the hamstrings and repeat one more time. This is a good stretch to start with before we actually get into the walking Frankenstein movements 
of the activation stretch um, of the hamstrings. So in case of a girl happens to be tight from sitting in school all day, they're less likely going to pull a muscle doing this stretch. Okay, this is an active calf stretch. So the girls are performing a stretch of the gastroc muscles here. So they're going to walk down just a little bit and then they're going to walk up back into a position where their heels are touching the ground. Their bottoms are up in the air and then they're going to hold it for maybe a count of 10 seconds. Good. And they're going to switch sides. This will pre help prevent calf strains during volleyball competition. The next stretch is called a, a lunge to an instep. This gets the uh, hip flexors. So the athletes are going to take a, a lunge forward and they're going to take their elbow on the same side and they're going to hold their hand on the ground for balance, and then they're going to stretch and then sit up and then move back. So one more time, take that same side, stretch those hip flexors, hold 10 seconds, push back. And we're going to do the other side now. Good. And push back. And they're going to repeat these about three times. The next dynamic warm-up we're going to do are called walking Frankensteins. This stretch actually helps to stretch and then activate the hamstring muscles. So they're going to do a little bit of a jog, they're going to kick their leg up, they're going to slap it back down. They're going to keep their back straight and they're going to do this about three times. The next active warm-up we're going to do is called the knee grab. The knee grab helps to stretch out the gluteal muscles and prepare, prepares the athlete to jump forcefully. So the girls are going to grab their knee, drive that knee to the chest, and then slap it back down. Probably want to repeat this about three times. You get a little bit of a jog in, increase the circulation, and prepare the muscles for movement. The next warm up is called slide and glide. This prepares the adductor muscles for movement. So the girls are going to stretch their adductors, take a couple steps and move into the next stretch. You're going to do this about, typically about a quart length and they should be moving a little quicker each time they do it. This will prevent any kind of a groin strains they might get from playing volleyball. Good rhythm. Also want to make sure the feet stay flat and good straight posture. This one's called active hip rotation, so we're trying to stretch out the internal and external hip rotators. So the girls are just pivoting around their spines, swinging those hips around, preparing them for movement. They're going to do these about three times. Really drive that knee to the chest and swivel. Nice job. We're now moving on to the active hip rotation dynamic stretch. So the girls are going to actively rotate their internal and external rotators of their hip. Moving with good form, good posture, driving that knee to the chest and swiveling those hips. These girls will do about three times. Increase that blood flow, prepare those muscles for movement. Next active warm up are called karaoke's. So the girls are going to warm up their hips again and their feet. They're going to swivel those feet, swivel those hips, keep their arms out at their sides. Each time they progress to another level, they're going to increase speed. So right now they're about 25%, now we're going to go 50%. I'm going to get those hips up a little higher. And then this last one is about 75%. It's a little quicker. Get those arms out at the side. Good job. Okay, we're now moving on to what we call tapioca. This is very 
a very fast foot motion to get the ankle joints loosened up and prepare for movement. So the girls are going to be moving their ankles as fast as they can. They're probably going to do this about three times. Okay, we're now moving on to butt kickers. This is where the girls are going to slam their calves into their butt muscles and try to prepare the hamstrings and calves for movement. They have their arms tied behind their back so they have good posture. And they're going to repeat this one more time. Each time they're going to work on trying to go a little bit faster until they create a sweat. Okay, we're now moving on to high knees. This is a very athletic movement. We're warming up the quads, quads, calves, hamstrings, and we're also focusing on good arm and hand action. This next one's the most active of all the stretches. It's the drop, squat, and jump. It's preparing the entire body to prepare for volleyball. So we're working almost every muscle in the body here, and these girls are going to repeat it five times. This will wear you out. Okay, we're now moving into half-court sprints. So the girls are going to go all out now. This is one of the last dynamic warm-ups that we're doing. So they're going to run as fast as they can, they're going to touch the line, and they're going to repeat this five times. Right now we're showing them three times. Good job. We're now moving on to what we call the prehab routine of our conditioning program. Throughout the season, um, many volleyball players might get strains and sprains, and so going through a good injury prevention program will help reduce those um, odds of getting injured. So we're first going to start with what we call front planks, where the girls will go up on their elbows, raise, and then they're going to hold for 10 seconds, making sure their hips and shoulders are square, feeling their lower abdominal muscles and their back muscles. They're going to hold it for 10 seconds and then come back down. And then they're going to rest for 5 seconds and then repeat 10 times. Okay, up again. Hold. This is very fatiguing on the lower abdominals, but it also works the shoulder stabilizers. Very important for a volleyball player. Okay, very good. Now we're moving over to the side plank. These are for the uh, side abdominal muscles called the obliques. So the girls are going to square up, use their oblique muscles, use their leg for support, hold 10 seconds, and then come back down. This is good for when the volleyball players have to rely on their obliques for rotation to provide more of a powerful uh, swing. They tend to strain these muscles, so this will help to alleviate that. Okay, and we're moving over here to the bridge. Paulina is going to show us how to do a proper bridge on the ball. So we're looking here is for the hips, knees, ankles, and shoulders to all stay in alignment. She's going to pull the toes back towards her. She's got to tighten her stomach and she's got to try not to move very much. She's got to hold for 10 seconds and repeat 10 times. This exercise gets the quads, hamstrings, calves, lower abdominals, and shoulder stabilizers. Very, a very productive exercise. We're now moving on to what we call Y's, T's, and W's. This is great for shoulder stabilization to prevent uh, ongoing shoulder problems a volleyball player could have during the season. We're trying to target now the lower trapezius muscles that attach down near the T12 vertebrae. And so what Zoe's going to show us how to do is what we call a Y. So the arms are going to raise up. And I'm going to cue her on holding her lower traps so she feels these muscles and doesn't overuse the upper traps. She's going to hold five seconds, relax, and she'll repeat on her own ten times. Okay, one more time. Squeeze down here, low, low, low. Good. Thumbs up. And relax. Okay, we're now moving into the T's. So now she's going to go out to the side, thumbs up. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, not overusing the upper traps. Hold 10 seconds, relax. She'll repeat that 10 times. Now we're going to W's. So now she's going to bend her elbow, thumbs up. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Do not use these upper traps. Very good. Engage these lower traps. And hold 10 seconds, repeat 10 times. And relax. This is great as part of our injury prevention program for these volleyball players. It's probably one of the number one injuries I deal with all season long. Since doing these exercises, we've reduced injuries in the sports center by about 50%. Okay, we're now moving on to the trampoline ball toss. This is great for a volleyball player to get the proprioceptive feedback on how to decelerate 
the motion of the shoulder joint while throwing a two-pound medicine ball against the trampoline. Many of them have shoulder issues, especially when they do their approaches, so this will help teach her how to stabilize her shoulder joint and decelerate the uh, force of the ball all at once. She'll do about 10 times on the right and then switch and do 10 times on the left. Obviously this side won't be as coordinated as the other side because she's a right-handed player, but it's still good to balance the body out. Okay, good job. As part of our rotator cuff injury prevention program, we're having Mahala right now uh, doing a, what we call a sh shoulder ball toss flip, working the uh, the rotators of the uh, rotator cuff here. So as you know, through a um, volleyball season, the rotator cuff muscles can become susceptible to injury. This will help during the off season strengthen those uh, stabilizers of the shoulder joint. So she's going to do 10 on one side and then turn around and do 10 on the other side. She's looking for proper form, which means her back is straight and shoulders rotating. She's trying to pick up like a rhythm. Very good. This is called the sideline bozu hold. So Cody's trying to find where her center of gravity is here. As you see, it's challenging to her as she's trying to figure out where her posture is. As she does this, she's really focusing on keeping the hips forward, legs up in the air, okay? Head looking straight ahead. And she's learning where her balance point here is. So it's great for the, uh, the obliques. And then pretty soon what we do is we take the hand, raise it above the head, and we can work on shoulder stabilization too. So very difficult, very challenging for her. Okay, why don't you move down just a little bit. So we'll see if we can reposition her here. Okay, good. So as she raises the arm up, obviously the center point of gravity changes, so now she has to adjust to it as well. Then you can add weight to the arm as the athlete improves. Now we're moving on to the single leg deadlift. Volleyball players have a high incidence of ankle sprains and lack of proprioception. This exercise will help facilitate those joint proprioceptors, work on their glutes, their hamstrings, and overall balance. As you see, Paulina is having a challenging time here doing this one. She's got to keep her back straight, hold, 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 and lift. Great for volleyball, great for ankle strengthening and stability. Good job. Now with most, most exercises, it's important to work both sides of the body, so we're now trying the right side here. And with Paulina being a right hand dominant player, right side dominant player, she has an easier time with this side. So again, stabilizing at the ankle joint, knee and hip. Good posture in the back. Drive that right through the hips using the core. It's good to start with a lightweight and then progress to a heavier weight to give it more challenging to the athlete. We're now moving on to the balance portion of the video. We have here Zoe trying to use the upside down bozu to um, do a squat with good form. She's got to have her arms out in front of her. She's going to kneel, uh, sit back like she's going to sit. And with most volleyball players, they have a difficult time controlling their knees and their hips. So this is a great proprioceptive uh, exercise to help with alignment. So she's going to squat. Knees are going to come out a little bit. Look straight ahead. Back is straight. And she's, as she feels more comfortable, she'll go into a full squat. But great for strength, balance, and proprioception. Very good. And we have Madison here on another type of balance board. This is one of the more beginning balance boards we use. And she's going to hold her hands out in front, and then she's going to provide us with a squat. Again, we're looking at a good knee, hip, and ankle alignment. So again, I'm going to cue her to push her knees out a little bit. She's going to hold her balance, keep her back straight, and come back up. This is great to do in front of a mirror so the athlete can visually see what's happening to her body and she can self-correct. Okay, one more time. Stick your bottom out, back straight, watch the knees, hold. You see how hard she has to work at this. Good job. Now we have Nicole here on some pillows. We call them disc pillows. Provides quite an unstable surface here, so this is gonna be challenging for her. So she's gonna try and squat, arms out, Knees out, good. I want you to hold, good. And come back up. Okay, one more time. Good. And hold, good. This is one of our more active uh, types of equipment for agility and balance. It's called a slide board. And Mahala here is gonna demonstrate 
how to uh, properly use this piece of equipment. So again, this is good if you can do it in front of a mirror. If not, it makes it a little more difficult and challenging for an athlete who hasn't done it before. Mihaela's done it a few times already, so she's pretty good. What she's going to do is start slow. She's going to work on her form. As soon as she comes to the edge, she's going to push off with her foot and try to get to the other side as quick as she can. So now she's going to start to speed up the motion a little bit. She's going to get down a little bit lower. This is great for the adductors, abductors, and lower abdominals. And as you see, she's using her hands, which is also part of the whole program, getting to use the hands with the rest of the body. So this can be quite a dynamic uh, exercise. You can change tempos. You can work more on endurance, or you can work on power. Great for volleyball. We're now moving on to the agility portion of the, of the program. This is going to be good for uh, a volleyball player's footwork, balance control, hand-eye coordination, and overall speed of movement. So as you see, these volleyball players are trying to move through this ladder quite quickly, keep their balance, use their arms, keep their back straight, nice rhythm, great for preventing ankle injuries. Okay, let's move on to the side one now. Okay, now we're moving sideways. Use those hands, use those hands. Must keep reinforcing to the athlete about using their hands because as you know, slow hands mean slow feet and slow legs. So the more they can use their hands and their arms, the faster they'll go. Good job. There's many various drills you can do with this. Um, these are just a couple of what we do here at the center. And as you see, they're starting to catch on and warm up a little bit better. Okay, this is called the icky shuffle. We're gonna just go back and forth. Again, using the hands, quick feet. Great for balance. Good footwork, good control. As you see, these girls have been trained how to do this already, so they look pretty good. So these are just a few examples of what we do with the uh, ladders. Like, like I said before, there's several options here that you can do. Depending on what the athlete has going on with them and the time of the season will depend on what you do in the, uh, in the ladders. We're now moving on to a, to a game that's quite fun for the athlete and entertaining. These are called reaction balls, and the athlete must try to uh, stop these reaction balls from getting by them, so they must have to work on their, uh, on their quick feet, their eye-hand coordination and overall agility. So it goes something like this. Good. Okay, next. We just keep moving through the circuit. And we try to figure out what the athlete has a difficult time with and try and reinforce that so they can get better. Okay, next. Good job. Let's keep moving. As you see, it takes good eye-hand coordination with this drill. <laughs> But it's fun for the athlete, and they'll want to definitely condition. Okay, next. Let's keep moving. Good job, good job. Okay, this drill, the athlete stands with their back towards me, and what they have to do when I say go is they're going to try and turn around, turn those hips fast, and without really seeing where that reaction ball is, they must know where it's at so they can catch it. Turn. Turn. So again, with this one, you can change tempos. Turn. And make it cha more challenging for them when it looks like it's easy. Turn. OK, next one. Turn. Move fast, move fast. Next. Turn. Good. One more. Turn. All right, good job. This last reaction ball exercise I'm going to show you works on an athlete's first step quickness where I'm going to have to drop this ball and an athlete's going to have to take off fast while running at full speed, try to pick up the reaction ball, and then run through that black line. Ready? Go. 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 
as you can see, as you can see, this is quite challenging for the athlete. They must be able to pick up an object as they're running at full speed, so it does enhance their proprioception, eye-hand coordination, and speed of movement. We're now moving on to a couple of my favorite cone drills. This one tests an athlete's um, lateral agility and stability. As Zoe's going to show us, she's going to have to go and run from cone to cone as fast as she can. We do this like several times until I feel she can't go any longer. But she's trying to pick up the speed and go as fast as she can, turn those hips, turn those shoulders, square up. Good job, Zoe. And now we're going to the next athlete, Madison. Fast as you can. As you see, this uh, works quite a bit on a player's balance. As they get tired, their muscle system obviously starts to fatigue and their coordination gets a little bit worse. So great on improving agility and lateral movement. This is another one of my favorite cone drills. Um, this is going to work on, again, an athlete's uh, balance awareness as she's going to have to go ahead, Cody, pivot around each cone, keeping good balance, have proper footwork, and then obviously not slip. Good job. So each athlete has to go around the cone as fast as they can without losing their balance. They have to use their hands when they run. So it's great, again, for uh, for ankle strengthening and speed work. Okay, good job, girls. We're now moving into our plyometric portion of the uh, program. We have here the Vertimax, which is a, um, a high velocity, low impact plyometric jump system that I use on our volleyball players here. During my time here at the Sports Center, um, over the last two and a half years, the average girl, if she trains on the Vertimax two to three times a week for four to six weeks, can improve her vertical jump anywhere from three to four inches. That's basically been our average here. So Nicole's going to first show us our basic uh, exercise that we do, which is just jumping straight up. She's going to give it 100% with each jump that she does. As she does this, I also biomechanically assess what she's doing with her body. As we can see, uh, she pronates at the feet and internally rotates at the hips, so I'll give her some cues while she's on there to help her uh, jump better and get more uh, power out of her body. So what I want you to do now is I want you to just stand straight and I want you to slowly go down like you're going to jump. What I want you to concentrate on is keeping the knees behind the toes, so more of a stick in the bottom out, okay? Back straight, arms are swinging back, okay, go down a little bit more. And as we see, the knees now are more in line with the second toe. Okay, now I want her to jump and then jump and then hold it. Jump and hold. So she sees herself rotating in again, so she'll try and correct herself. This is good to use with a mirror. Do it again, jump and land. As you see, she's having a difficult time with this, so uh, we would work with her just basically on how to jump correctly so it reduces injuries. Okay, we're now moving on to lateral hopping over this 12-inch uh, stepper. Mihail is one of my... Um, better, more experienced athletes on this Vertimax, so I'm going to have her demonstrate six times how to explosively jump over the hurdle, keeping her balance and control throughout the whole entire movement. Okay, go ahead, Mihaela. This is great for, uh, for her ankles, knees, hips. As you can see, she has pretty good technique. We're now moving into one of my favorite, more explosive movements. These are called tuck jumps. These are explosive movements that involves bringing both knees to the chest with a very powerful movement. Usually what we do with the athlete is we have them jump six times, we assess their uh, form and their posture, and if they're good to go, we have them do th about three sets of this. Why don't you show us, Mihaela? Really fast. Good. As you can see, she has pretty good postural alignment when she does this. When we first start out teaching an athlete, they don't always look this good, so you're going to have to go with this one slowly. Okay, we're now moving on to a little more volleyball specific uh, movements. This is like, this is an approach jump that she, she's going to try and do. She's going to attempt to do five on each side. So again, explosively jump to one side, using her hips, ankles, and knees explosively. And then she's going to move to the other side. We're now moving into a more volleyball specific uh, program here. This can be done while your uh, volleyball players are practicing 
um, a few girls, it only takes a few girls, and then they can rotate. You can go through an entire sports-specific volleyball jumping program within probably 12 to 18 minutes using 10 to 12 girls. So right now what we're working on is just jumping and blocking. It's good for both the uh, server and the uh, blocker. So now we have to have the athlete more la move more laterally, left and right. So it makes it more difficult on them. As you can see, the whole team can get involved with this, so it's very uh, productive as part of your uh, conditioning program and practice, too. So if you're a team that doesn't have a lot of time and you want to put in conditioning to their program and increase the vertical jump, this is a great um, piece of equipment to use for this. Okay, the last one I'm going to show you increases an athlete's speed and great for arm-eye-hand coordination. Again, better done in the mirror. Paulina is going to show us how to run for six seconds at top speed with good form. Pump, 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 pump. Good. This is a very fatiguing exercise. You can only probably get two or three bursts out of an athlete doing this, but when you take all the equipment off, they're going to feel so much faster. And as you can see, with her form, it was good. It just enhances that overall good eye-hand coordination and good form. I'm going to show you another great plyometric exercise you can do. You don't need any equipment to do this. It can be done anywhere, anytime. It's great. This is called skipping, and it's great, again, for that eye-hand coordination and getting those arms to fire with the hips. You can assess an athlete's posture and overall ability doing this exercise. It's fun, it's effective, and it increases blood flow and provides great communication to the muscles. Okay, let's do it again. This is a precursor to the next one we're going to do prepares the movement, the athlete, um, for bounding, which is our next one. This will help enhance the athlete's ability to jump higher and move more efficiently. Okay, this next one is more explosive. It's called bounding. The athlete is now going to leap, jump as high as they can, but they're working on distance and body control. So it's a lot harder to do. It's more fatiguing. Yeah, very effective exercise, though, to increase an athlete's vertical jump. Okay, do it again. Again, you don't need any equipment to do this. It can be done anywhere. And very effective for increasing an athlete's vertical jump. Very explosive. Good job, girls. Okay, we're now moving on to plyo boxes. This can be done in your center. Um, we purchase these through Perform Better. Uh, they're great for teaching an athlete how to jump higher and be more explosive. So Mahal is going to show us here how to jump efficiently and explosively. Good job. As you can see in here, she doesn't make a lot of noise when she lands, so she's jumping very efficiently. Try to become as light as you can on your feet when you jump. Okay, Zoe. Good job. Now Pauline is going to show us on a smaller one. So we're trying to make the movement efficient. We're trying to make it explosive. So I really get, want you guys to use your hands when you jump. It's going to make it a lot easier to increase these box sizes in your jump. OK, Cody. Good job. We're trying to land in the middle of the box with good form. So on this one, I'm going to ask Madison to hold it so I can assess how she's landing. OK, as you see, she's on her toes. So we actually want her to land kind of flat so she's more balanced when she lands back straight and more of a little more of a squat position. Okay, so let's try it again. So Madison's gonna repeat that, get a little closer. Okay, really use your arms. Nice, that was very good, good job. You can use, plyo, you can use these plyo boxes as an assessment tool or a conditioning tool to increase an athlete's ability to jump higher and be more efficient in volleyball. The next section of this videotape is on uh, postural concerns and possible fixes. When a volleyball player comes to me and I assess them, typically what I find um, with the volleyball player is due to the sport, they're going to have rounded shoulders. They're probably going to have an increased thoracic kyphosis in their upper back. Their hips are probably going to be um, rotated forward, their pelvis rotated forward. Um, they're probably going to have internally rotated um, femurs, and they're probably going to pronate. So when I see something like this, this is where we put in corrective stretches and corrective exercises to help balance out the body. But the one thing I can do with her right now just to uh, help her is put her into what I call a good posture where the shoulders are back, so I'm giving her reinforcement. I'm going to rotate her pelvis back just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to ask her to stand more in the middle of her feet 
And we can do this in front of a mirror so she can view this. I'm going to ask her to rotate her knees out. So when I look at her now and I look at the shoes that she might have, um, I may already want to put inserts in the shoes or just give her a better shoe support so that her hips and knees and ankles line up better um, when I look at an athlete like this. She possesses a lot of power as it is, but when I start to see some malalignment, I know injury isn't too far, um, too far from us. So in a typical volleyball posture, this is what I see. After I assess them, I give them a good, um, again, a good corrective stretching, good corrective exercise program to help um, address these issues so that injury will likely not, not occur. We're now moving on to what we call corrective stretches. These stretches are used when we find muscle imbalances in uh, volleyball players. In a typical volleyball posture, due to the uh, sport, the athlete's shoulders are usually rounded. They're more into a lordotic hip position, which right away tells me their quads are going to be tight, their hip flexors are going to be tight, their calves are going to be tight. It's basically a typical um, volleyball posture that I see. So I'm going to show you some corrective stretches that we do on a daily basis when we find these issues. These can be done um, either after you've done your dynamic warm-ups, once we've gotten good blood flow to the muscles, or if they're not practicing that day, after they warm up, say on a treadmill or a bike, this would be a good time to um, do this, these corrective stretches. So we have Paulina and Nicole here showing us how to do a um, active, like a static hip flexor stretch. So they're gonna get into a good position, good alignment. The reason for the arm over the head is to provide more stretch here in the rectus femoris. Their back is straight. They're gonna breathe while they hold this. And I'll just come around and correct a couple things. So the more I can cue them, the more they're going to learn how to do these correctly. And they can actually teach the parents how to do these when they need assistance as well. So they're going to hold these stretches about 30 seconds, repeat three times on each side. If I find a muscle imbalance more on one side than the other, we're going to duplicate that maybe a couple more times. Very good, girls. And okay, we're now moving over to the hamstring stretch. So Zoe here is going to lay down on her back. We're going to start with the knee bend at 90 degrees and slowly raise the leg up in the air. What she's going to want to learn how to do here is relax as the strap holds onto the leg. She's going to allow this hamstring muscle to stretch. Right now we're in a neutral position where we're getting more of the biceps femoris. Then we can also rotate the foot laterally and then medially to get the other two hamstring muscles. So if we find one that's more tight on Zoe, we're going to hold it there for 30 seconds. And again, we're trying to correct muscle imbalances. So if this leg is tighter than this leg, she'll probably end up doing twice as much on this side. And she's going to release and then do it again. Very good. All right. And we have Madison here doing an adductor stretch. Typically in volleyball players, from all the lunging they're doing, the adductors are used quite a bit. So these muscles get strained on an everyday basis. So a typical Indian style position is fine. I'm going to correct her posture. And as you can see, her knees can't touch the ground, so she does elicit some shortness in the adductors. So she's going to just sit here. She's actually going to take her elbow and push down on those adductors and get a good stretch. She's going to breathe while she does this. And she's going to hold about 20 to 30 seconds. Very good. Okay, we have Mahala here. This is a great stretch for your hip rotators. This is called a 90 90 stretch. So, what I'm going to do is get Mahela to move her hip back a little farther, this one out a little bit. I'm going to straighten her posture up. So by straightening her up, she's got to kind of sit on this hip joint and stretch on the outside here. And you may even feel like a little bit of a groin stretch on the other leg. She's got to breathe and hold for about 20 to 30 seconds. And again, re-emphasizing, if we find one hip more tighter than the other, we're going to double time it. We're going to do twice as much on the one side than the other. Good job. We have here Cody, she's going to stretch out a typical quad muscle that's almost in every volleyball player you'll find shortness. So she's got to put her foot here on the Swiss ball. She's got to keep her back straight. She's got to rotate her pelvis back more into a posterior tilt. The other way. Okay. Let's get you straighter. So more upright. So the more the, ro the pelvis can posteriorly rotate, the more stretch we're going to get there on the rectus femoris. And she's going to hold that for about 30 seconds. This one usually um, is a pretty active stretch for a volleyball player. As you know, the quad muscles are probably the most hyperactive 
group in the volleyball player's body, so she's really going to feel this. The reason why I use the quad or the Swiss ball is to really isolate that quad muscle. It's different than just grabbing your foot and stretching. This really isolates the quad. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about regeneration or recovery. It's probably the most important part of this whole system. If you don't give yourself ample time to recover from a workout, game, practice, then injury will probably uh, soon follow. Um, remember that you need to at least get eight hours of sleep a night because during that time the body recovers, the brain recovers, so whatever you did during that day you're giving yourself the best chance um, to re-nourish um, the, uh, the foods you've eaten and the, and the muscles get to recover a little bit better so you're probably going to feel a lot better when you wake up and you've had a productive, uh, pretty productive workout then. Remember to stretch within an hour after a practice or a game. If you don't, um, you know, your, those muscles that you've used throughout practice or the game are probably going to stay shortened and you're probably going to wake up you know, with sore muscles and probably not perform well the next day. You've got to drink plenty of fluids after, after a game. Uh, carbohydrates and a little bit of uh, protein, especially after a workout, will help replenish some of the fluids you've lost through sweat and perspiration as well as uh, maybe not get as fatigued the next day. I always say take a plunge. If you had a really hard workout or a real hard tournament, get into um, what we call um, a cool dip and a warm bath. If you go from warm to cold and do it maybe two or three times, you're opening and closing the blood vessels so it's going to pump out all that, um, all that bad stuff in your system and it's going to help, um, help you feel better the next day and you're probably going to be able to practice more efficiently. Right after a workout, a recovery shake within about an hour after a workout is a good idea. Something that consists of uh, carbs and protein, a typical protein shake that has whey protein in it, amino acids, uh, maybe a banana, a little bit of milk or chocolate milk is a, is a good idea. So just remember these, uh, these, key, these key points that I've talked about, coaches, parents, and athletes, and you'll feel better the next day and be able to perform more efficiently and more effectively, especially if you have uh, anywhere from two to three practices and maybe a couple games during the week you'll do a lot better. Parents, coaches, and athletes, I now like to talk to you about a very important subject and that is um, good nutrition habits. When I go around to schools and give uh, nutrition talks, many times I ask kids, you know, have you had any breakfast this morning and what did you have? Almost 50 to 75 percent of them say, I didn't have time for breakfast so I didn't have anything. Then I say, what did you have for lunch? Oh, maybe some potato chips and a Coke. What did you have when you got home from school? Oh, maybe some M&Ms. Well, if you're going to try to perform at a high level, that obviously is not a good way to go. So some key points on good nutrition habits, you have to have a good breakfast every day. It's the start of the day. So try to have something that has protein, carbs, and fat in it. Um, something like oatmeal, eggs, and butter on toast would be a good way to go. Prepare something the night before if you're trying to rush out the door, but make sure you have something in your system to burn for the rest of the day. Try to eat at least four to six uh, small meals in a day. So I know you go to class and you sit in school all day, and how am I going to take in four to six meals? Well, when I mean four to six small meals, I mean when you're going class to class, you can always have almonds or seeds with you, a banana, an apple, um, and then have a, have a good lunch. And when you come home from, um, from school and you say you have to go to practice within a couple hours, make yourself a protein shake. You know, that's a good source of... Uh, nutrition and then when you get done with practice make sure you have you have dinner it's probably going to be the lightest meal of the day because you're preparing yourself um, to, re to go to bed so you can recover so that doesn't ha none of these meals have to be big but I would have them every um, every like two to four hours just so your blood sugar level stays stable you have good mental focus and when you need to practice um, you'll have the energy to do so after practice um, we want to also try to um, replenish the fluids that we may have lost through perspiration and um, sweating. So make sure you know you replenish with some water, some Gatorade, some Propel, and go home and have a, have a good meal that consists of carbs, proteins, and healthy fat. Um, consume at least one vegetable with each meal that you have. Also, I can't emphasize enough to get plenty of rest. You have to at least go to bed at 10 and wake up at 6 to stay in what we call our Kirkanian uh, rhythm. So between 10 and 2, the muscles are going through the recovery, and between 2 and 6, the brain is going through recovery. So if you're not getting a good night's sleep, you're probably not going to feel very energized in the morning. I'd like to now talk to you about some of our typical volleyball injuries that we, uh, we see on a daily basis and some of the solutions we might have for them. Uh, typically during a volleyball season, they're going to go, and have, go through and have strained back muscles. Um, they're going to have pulled shoulder muscles, shin splints, ankle sprains, 
and hopefully, but hopefully not, but what does occur sometimes are ACL tears, and that's basically due to their, um, their alignment and how they, um, how they use their bodies in volleyball. When an injury does occur, I want you to think about rice rest, ice, compression, and elevation. You want to almost do this immediately so the body can start repairing itself. The longer you take to, to do this, the more likely um, you may re-injure it or it'll take longer to take the inflammation out of the body. Please consult a physician too if it seems like a serious injury. Um, seeing a physician right away, they can do diagnostic testing and uh, maybe provide some treatment options for you. Because female, the female anatomy is so much different than the, the male anatomy counterpart, lower extremity injuries and also upper extremity injuries are so common in volleyball due to the laxity of the ligaments, tendons, and, and joints. Those muscles need to be strengthened. And so therefore, if an athlete isn't going through a good conditioning program, uh, injury is likely probably going to occur. So please remember some of these points. And again, if you have any more questions, please feel free to contact me at kineticcenter.com. I want to thank you for watching our wellness video today. Again, this tape was made for coaches, parents, and players alike so that you can learn from it, uh, learn how to warm up correctly, how to take care of your body to, be, to perform more efficiently, and especially eat better. As we know, um, as I've talked about previously, athletes don't eat nutritionally, so whatever they're doing on the court, if they don't eat correctly, they're probably not going to have a, a high carryover to whatever they're going to do the next day because they haven't recovered correctly. So I hope this video was informative. You can check us out on kineticcenter.com for more information about what we have to offer.